The FTD, Mr Farage has the floor. What a picture you paint. A European Union of peace, of prosperity, of contentedness. And as you said, you're trying to make it a little more perfect every day. Well, it's a very good advertising slogan, but tell you what surprised me. Since your last State of the Union speech, there's been a seismic political event in Europe, perhaps one even on a par with Brexit, Italy. A founding member of the Union, the third biggest economy in the Eurozone, now has a coalition government between the five stars of Malaga that is polling over 60% of the vote and is posing a direct challenge, both in terms of the management of the Eurozone and indeed how the migration crisis is handled. You made no acknowledgement of that at all. No acknowledgement of the populist revolt that is sweeping through virtually every single member state. Instead, you're to carry on regardless. And I noted your continued use of the phrase sovereign Europe. What you're talking about is a deeper centralization of power, a centralization of power in terms of Europe's foreign policy, a centralization of power, as you first laid out last year, in terms of building a European army, more power at the centre for taxation. All of this, of course, meaning less to be done at the nation-state level. And now, another 10,000 European border guards paving the way for a federal border police in Europe. Well, I'll tell you something. If you've got problems with the Italians now, you ain't seen nothing yet when you put that proposal to them. But it's all about centralisation. Power, power, power. But here's the funny thing. You appealed to our sense of European patriotism. So why is it that patriotism at the nation state level is considered to be insular, bad, nasty, xenophobic, probably racist into the bargain? And yet, and yet, patriotism at a European level is a good and a virtuous thing. And I'm afraid this idea of European patriotism, this idea of putting that flag above their own nation-state flag is for the birds. People do not have a profound sense of European identity. They have a sense of national identity. And in, and in a way, that is the great dividing line between your vision of Europe and that increasingly that has been said by the electors. We wish to live in nation-states. Now on Brexit, Mr Juncker, on the Irish border already there are huge differences between the North and the South. Differences of politics, of tax, of currency and of law. And we manage. And if we can get to a free trade deal, well, of course, there'll be no difficulties whatsoever. And I thought you had some very positive things to say. You said our vote to leave was a vote to leave the single market and its associated parts. I agree with you. Quite why Mrs May at Chequers wants to opt back into much of it, I don't know. But you said twice that we need to come to a free trade deal, it's what European exporters want. And it is, absolutely. And it's what we want. Surely now, the time is right, the ground is prepared for a Canada Plus style trade deal between you and, and between us. We leave political union, but we carry on doing business on a tariff-free basis. We want it. Increasingly, I think that you want it. Let's get Brexit sorted. And Mr Verhofstadt, you'll be happy. You'll see the back of us. Yeah.